Hello and welcome, good fellas. Today I have something special for you. I'm ready to present Atomic for Dummies, our basic review of the game. After six months in this game, I learned a lot about it and I want to share my thoughts with you guys. But first of all, thank you for motivation to play this game. I have a lot of fun, but sometimes I take defeats a little too much to heart. Uh, so the you and your support is the only motivation to stay sharp and keep playing. I decided to cut this video into logic parts to keep story consistent. In this video we will speak about game stages, economy, lords, items and heroes. The game is really complicated. Okay, let's start. Game stages. Like every other game, Atomic consists of early, mid and late game. I measured them like that. Early game is from round 1 till round 10, mid game is round 11 till round 18, and late game round 19 and above. But first of all, let's talk about ban and pick stage. In that moment of the game, we need to ban some annoying heroes and look for the best lords to play in this lobby. We should pay our attention to tier 6 items, good cores and supports, and some imbalanced skills to understand what could help us to save some life in early game and beat enemy cores in late game. But we'll speak more about it in Heroes part. So, early game. On this stage we build up our game strategy based on heroes we got in tavern and upgrade tavern of course. For most of the lords your pick structure should be like in regular Dota 2. You should have one hardcore to win late game, one or two semi cores that win you mid game and make some stuff in late, and two supports that win you early game. Or be useful in all stages due to powerful ults or skills. This structure dictated by economy of the game, but we'll speak about it in next part. Don't be afraid to switch your heroes if you have something better in a role. You have some useless money only on early game, like in round 2 or 3, or round 6. Mid game. On this stage everybody have tavern 6, people start to get first tier 5, tier 6 core items, and max levels on their cores. Also on this stage half of the lobby lose game. Your plan for this stage is find level on your hardcore, find core items or skills and look around for your opponents in late game to find a way to counter their win condition. Late game. At this point all depends on the strength of lord, the amount of imba you managed to collect previously and the chosen way to counter opponent's scores. Because everyone who stay in the game already have at least one core with full build on peak of power. You should be focused on some support skills positioning, durability and usefulness of your supports. Economy. This is really easy to understand that if you have more items and levels versus opponent with similar pick, you'll win. So you should use your gold rational in all stages. Let's talk a little bit about numbers on round 20. Why 20? Just random good number plus my games in average and in round 22 or 23. So round 20 is kind of a final checkpoint. 195 gold. Is total gold you earn as income on most of the lords. 39 gold you'll spend to upgrade tavern to tier 6. Also, you lost 6 gold before round 10 anyway, because all items cost 3 gold, and you have rounds when gold is not multiple of 3. Here is two optimal spend schemes for first 10 rounds. Use first one if you need some tier 2 items, and second one if you need fast level on course. In standard game you want to spend some money for rolls, because you never lucky. In average it's 2 gold per round, so it's 40 gold for rolls by round 20. So we have 116 gold after all spends. 116 gold is 38 purchases. To have one hardcore with level 37 items and one change skill we need 15 purchases. So we have 23 purchases left. If we lucky enough, we could have second core with same stuff, it is another 15 purchases. So we have 8 purchases left. You could have one semi-core level 10 with 2 items and two level 6 supports with discs. 
Why we need this number? To understand that one full core costs you 40% of all your income, and spending money for levels or on supports is impractical. Of course, you could build up only one hardcore to spend more money for your supports and make your pick more balanced. Of course, sometimes you haven't level 30 on your core or some key items, and Tavern Roll offer you to buy some levels on position 5 hero. But this is not the reason to waste money. Be cold-blooded. Only after round 20 you could start thinking about your supports. That's all about economics. Lords. This is one of the most important topics of the game, because lords are totally unbalanced. Lords dictate you your game plan, and for this topic I prepared a little classification. We have three main categories and some subcategories in them. Tops are totally arguable, because I didn't play every lord, but I play versus every lord. Three main categories are battle lords, lords that bring you some advantage in fight, economic lords, bring you money items or pick advantage, and mixed lords, they're just a mix of some other subcategories. First subcategory is battle attacking lords with global effects. Each lord have an attacking ability that have an if effect for all heroes. In this category, best lords are Crystal Maiden, Oracle and Zeus. Oracle and Zeus are just strong bursting lords, and Crystal Maiden makes your mage cores insanely powerful, bringing them infinite mana and also brings ton of control to hero without it. Like Ult of Zeus in start of the round, use Frostbite on each hero. Who needs that hunter with dagger on front lane when you have global stun from any position on Zeus level 6 without items? Second subcategory is battle attacking lords with single target effects. In my opinion, this category contained the most broken lords. For example, in current, in current patch, Omni Knight is not the most powerful lord in this category, but the most powerful lord in whole game. Ability to have core level 18 on round 2 is insanely powerful. Kotl, Siren, Necrophos, all of them extremely powerful, but practically all of them depend on one special core. That will win you a game and this could be a luck test. Third subcategory is Battle Defensive Lords. Here we have just three lords with defensive abilities. All of them just help you play greedy and rich late game without a problem. By the way, Pudge in my opinion is best lord for newcomers, because you stay in game long enough to start understand game mechanics. Economic Lords. First of all is pure economic lords. They just give you money, nothing more. Alchemist have the most temp, Ench little slower and Bounty Hunter start shining only in mid and late game. Next subcategory is Choice Lords. They give you advantage by reducing the randomness of your tavern. Yes, it is still random, but with these lords you could rely not only on random. Best in this category and my favorite lord in this game is Clockwork, because you'll always have BKB on your course and require tier 6 items for your build, even if they are not in pool. Next, but not the worst category, is Item Lords. They give you items, lol. The most powerful between them is Ember. It's good in any lobby with powerful Fiskars and of course in lobbies with Ember Spirit. Rubik is good lord, because guaranteed again blessing is always good, of course in lobbies with Ember. Nature Prophet is just lord to 4. He is powerful enough to not lose the mid game, but due to totally random set of items in late game, top 1 for this lord is not a skill test, it's a luck test. The last category contains lords that could be in more than one previous subcategory. Dark Willow is both economic and attacking lord if you build your strategy on mage cores. SF and Bloodseeker are both attacking and defensive lords. I don't really like lords from this category, because you could have better lords for each strategy that you wanna play with these lords. For example, Crystal Maiden is stronger than Dark Willow as mage-based attacking lord, and each economic lord stronger than Dark Willow as economic lord. So why need to play with Lord Dark Willow? Items. On each level of tavern we have some items actual for whole game, or items you need for your core. 
but I want to dwell on this topic for a long time because everything is very situational. We will limit ourselves to the top three items at each level, of course, in my opinion. Tier 1. Bloodstone is really broken on each hero that deal damage by spell or abilities. It is hard to imagine Axe, Bristleback, Lash Rock, Pouch or Raider without it. Point Booster is simple, 160 damage without a slot. Vanguard just wins you early game in lobbies without super strong mages. Tier 2. Necronomicon is just a super powerful item. If you feel that you have a lack of damage or you need some meat in frontline, Necro is your choice for early game. Shadowblade has break ability for 4 seconds in this custom, and break ability is one of the most important things in this game. And Busher is just Busher lol. Tier 3. First of all, Disc. Disc save lives. In game where you could force Zeus to ult 4 times with 80% spell amplification, you just couldn't play without discs. It is a base for your subords and sometimes course to survive. X Machina is just good, because 1. BKB exist in game, 2. Similar sets exist in game, 3. 20 armor is 20 armor. Minotaur Horn is a small BKB. In lobbies with silencers, disruptors, set hunters and many other boys and girls must have. Tier 4. Again, for most of the builds, uh, it's core item. Really, really good. Dagger could help you to break enemy position and use core ults perfectly. Pipe is really good until late game. It is 2k HP in one slot, plus some magic resistant on your core. Tier 5. First of all, BKB. BKB is a must have item in every game. In ton of games, BKB is the key item to win. And it is the most powerful item in a game for sure. Second is Refresher Orb. It isn't just good, it's absurdly overpowered. Just imagine, you have hero with insanely powerful gold, like Eo, Juggernaut, Shadow Shaman, Razor. And with only one item, for just 250 mana, they could use ult twice, or actually three times with Ogre Secret, or four times with Lord Kotal, or six times with Ogre Secret and Lord Kotal. Yes, it is as broken as it sounds. Third place is arguable. In my opinion, it is Abyssal, because it gives you control through BKB. But Mirror Shield is good, Dagon is good, Hex, Tarask, Silver, and MKB. All these items situationally awesome, but for me, Abyssal a little bit more useful. For tier 6, we skip again in Blessing and Moonshard. Of course, tier 6 item without a slot is perfect. And as we already talked about Ogre Secret, let's skip it too, because multicast and cooldown reduction 100% great. I want to talk a little bit about Lord Ring. Lord Ring is an item for illusionists. It has active like Manta, but with better illusions and passes to increase stats of all your illusions. No one forbids you to take Lord Ring and Manta on your illusionist core like Terrorblade or Chaos Knight. No one forbids you to take Lord Ring and Manta on your Fist cores like Draw Ranger or Sniper. And no one forbids you to take Lord Ring and Manta on Core Axe. Yes, Contra Helix work on illusions. And yes, Shard also work on illusions. And yes, it is as broken as it sounds. Heroes. In this topic, I just want to cover the most imbalanced heroes in my opinion. Reasons why they are imbalanced and how you could beat them. I prepared something like top of shit or a shit pile. I start from situationally annoying characters to actually 100% broken. And in the bottom of our pile are tanky bastards. Regularly they are not an issue, but you should have break to beat them. And it is easy when you have some break skills in your course or supports, but not in every lobby you have these skills. And uh, in that case you need silver age. But uh, it is not the best slot on your core, and tank could have some evasion like disc or eel. 
situationally annoying. Second stage with Ricky with Lord Naga. Yes, it could be easy countered by some daggers and scudis in late game and just necros on early game, but uh, like in situation with tanks, you need to hold a not best tier 4 slot on your core, just because some genius decide to play Nagari combo. Hopefully he hasn't Naga Siren pick. Little more annoying. Next stage is broken skill owners. For me, there are three pain and ass heroes. Nyx, Slarder and also Mars. With heroes not so good by themselves, but when you saw them in lobby you already know that enemy core will have rage, so you can't win late game with mage burst. Enemy core will have Bash of the Deep stun lock, so you need Bash of the Deep on your core or ton of other control to deal with it. Enemy will have bulwark, so your fist cores need to mix their damage in some way. A lot of problems just for existence as heroes in lobby, and knowing enough. Next stage is level 6 monsters. Silencer, Snapfire, Pugna and Shadow Shaman. All of them have unbalanced ultis or skills. They are too strong, they deal a ton of impact for whole game just for 3 gold. Just for example, if you wanna play core Crystal Maiden or Shaker or some other casters with long animation, sorry you can't without BKB effect. We have Silencer in lobby, and Snapfire level 6 just wins solo every round in early game. And I don't want to talk about Shadow Shaman wards and priorities of AI at all. Hopefully it nerfed a little bit in one of the last patches. Annoying. Here is top 3 of Pile. These heroes are so broken that every lobby with them looks same. Rock, paper, scissors, who collect more of them? or find a way to beat them. I think if devs have statistic of pick and ban rate, they achieve top 3. First of all, and certain top, is Disruptor. He's like Silencer, but worse, because not everybody rates Silencer high, and you'll have 4 guys with him in the lobby, but in the rare lobby with the Disruptor, oh, everybody will pick it if he could, and all rounds like fucking westerns, because Everybody have Disruptor in front lane and four photographers in back lane, and even God don't know who will cast ult first. But in comparison with the following heroes, he is just annoying. And second place is Juggernaut. What can I say about it? He is totally broken. Just one button win game, and you need to use all your creativity to beat him, like five discs and eels or ton of illusions and summons, but for real, only this could help. Because illusions and summons simply countered by Sub Magnus or Gather Cleave, or even Battle Fury. Really annoying. And of course, first place. Ew, the fucking Wisp. If you don't know, in this custom his ult is just broken. He makes him and teaser target totally invincible for ton of time, and of course fully heals them. The support is too good, especially in games where you could change skills, where Raper didn't drop, where you could build an invincible tank with ton of damage like Axe or Bristleback or Dooza and just give him second life and frames of total invincible. Twice. With a refresher orb. Insanely annoying. Thank you for watching guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. Stay tuned and see you soon.